So I've decided to revisit the Toolmaker's Microscope I've been building. I'd had to put it aside for a few months because of a few other projects I've had to tackle here in my workshop. Um, uh, for those who have not seen the um, configuration of this uh, instrument, uh, it's, um, it's, it's to be used for mounting in a milling machine or into a, a lathe and kind of look down the axis of the machine being used um, and magnify um, the items on the exact center line of, uh, of the device. And so the way it works is what, what we have is, um, is an eyepiece tube that's, that screws into this part and of course on camera it won't cooperate. In any event, we've got the, the this is the body of the of the instrument, and uh, have I got this the right way around? Yes. Anyway, this is part of the problems I've been having. Anyway, that's it's all made of aluminium and will be anodized black eventually. <clears throat> so what we have is the body machined out of a solid uh, aluminium bar, the eyepiece tube, which will have a, a, a focusing lens. At the at the eye end, if you like, ultimately some sort of shank, interchangeable shank, so that um, Morse taper um, could be mounted on there, or some other shank to 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 suit the machine being used. I've got a few different machines. My milling machine has a three Morse taper shank or spindle, so to take three Morse taper shanks. My uh, screw cutting lathe has a two Morse taper shank, and um, the uh, toolmaker's lathe, the Schoblin lathe, has a two degree taper, um, but it could also, with advantage, be used uh, with a collet, a Schoblin W12 type of collet, so that this microscope could be mounted in the vertical slide of the lathe, uh, and thereby allowing you to bring the vertical slide's ac um, coil axis into any position relative to the machine's main uh, spindle axis. Uh, which could be very useful. I'll illustrate that later. <clears throat> In any event, I'd uh, I'd machined this all, all of these parts some time ago. Uh, this nose piece that you can see here is a separate piece, which has been uh, cemented in there with Loctite. Uh, in anticipation of being able to be removed later for further operations, you can see that the, the this nose area here is uh, threaded 32 threads per inch. Which is the Royal Micros Microsco <laughs> the Royal Microscopy Society's standard thread size. I'm going to clear my throat off camera. <coughs> a frog in my throat. Anyway, I've got this uh, little uh, objective lens, a microscope objective lens, which screws in there. And you can see that it screws in pretty, pretty neatly. That's just a four times uh, magnification lens. And in the, um, in the IPC, I'll have a, a times 10 magnifier. In fact, I can show you what that looks like. Uh, I've got it here in a little pot. Uh, so that's the the eyepiece, the microscope eyepiece. Not amazingly high quality, but then again, we're not doing traditional microscopy, microscopy of these things. Anyway, <coughs> my original intention was to make uh, the objective lens mount uh, or objective lens holder as well because I do have a little lens to use in that spot a 72 millimeter focusing lens which I can show you but really I thought it would just be too much palaver to make what is already freely available you know for about a fiver on eBay so that would have been. I might still use it. I might make my own objective ultimately, but you know. so that's the um, that's the lens. And you can imagine to turn that into that would take you know a fair degree of fiddling about. You need to make the body, uh, true seating for it, and a kind of a ring to hold it down, and it would have to hold it down with equal pressure, so as to not and the, le the uh, lens over to one side. So quite a bit of quite a bit of faffing about really to get something like that made well. All within the realms of possibility, but I don't have time to faff about with that sort of thing when these things are freely available. 
So that's, that's that lens. I'll just put it aside here for a moment. This is the eyepiece tube. Uh, you can see it's, it's, it's a bit grimy around, you know, there's a bit of excess Loctite there. That, that, that is all okay because all that sort of thing can be cleaned up. And I knew I'd have to set this project aside for some time. And so I took the trouble to mark the various pieces because I knew, you know, when I come back to them another time, I'd never, you know. So you see the two little dots because the two components might need separating. This end has a, a plug with a little center hole in it so that the whole job could be turned very accurately uh, if, if it ever had to be remounted in a lathe. Um, and so those threads were um, screw cut. You know, all, all of this was screw cut in the lathe. However, I encountered a problem. And th th this, comp this piece you see here is a, is a chucking mandrel. And so basically, this is just a piece of raw stock which uh, I'd mounted in a, a chuck in the lathe. I can't remember if it was a three or four jaw chuck initially. Um, I then turned it while um, I turned it in one setting to have mating threads with the female threads in the in the in this back uh, boss here, um, so that once made. Well, actually, I'm starting at the wrong end. I started off with this piece, um, uh, mounted this in the four jaw chuck, and, and got all these faces um, uh, milled away using a, a milling cutter in the, in the in the vertical slide. In any event, I wanted to mount this this body uh, very accurately along the lathe center line, so that I could bore and and, and, and do a second second operations on it <clears throat> and so I'd screwed it onto this mandrel that I made and that that uh, piece of threaded section there is for I think for that uh, piece in any case the advantage of using this in a four draw truck is you could clock it uh, to be really um, concentric later if you had to take it out of the truck you could remount it with a high degree of precision However, as I said, I need to sub I need to remove this uh, eyepiece holder because I need to mount a little holder in there to take a prism to to change the direction of the sight line from this direction to that direction. So with it, with it, with the eyepiece tube in there and uh, the objective lens here. You know, the, the microscope's looking at an object here where, here where my finger is. So there'd be a 45 degree prism mounted within the body to turn the, the sight line through 90 degrees um, of the optical axis. Uh, and so I need to access the interior of this block. However, um, I couldn't crack the seal. I couldn't, I couldn't crack the, the, um, the Loctite. And, and it's, it's, it's proved to be a real problem for me. The finish on this was beautiful. I've, I've tried to protect it. I've had this in the vise. Um, I've tried heat. I've tried force. And it's just completely seized up. I'm really... Uh, so I, I should say that in trying to remove this, I added this mandrel as a kind of handle to give me more leverage in removing this this uh, this objective lens holder uh, and then heat and then heated this uh, but in doing that I seem to have somehow welded these two pieces together so I now have to remove this and this uh, really irritatingly I'm gonna have to kind of turn away um, I'm gonna have to mount this in a four jaw chuck part this off and put a a boring bar down the, down the center of that. I have to drill it first because I think. Hmm. Uh, I actually know there is a hole. There's there's a partial bore down there. So if I part this off somewhere along there, I should have a hole free all the way down there. If I get my finger stuck in there, that'll be even more trouble because I won't be able to turn that away in the lathe. Anyway, so I think that's the next job. Mount this in the four jaw chuck, part that off, put a boring bar down there, and try and just ease this out. I don't think it's actually welded on, you know, mechanically, pro you know, proper welded, but.
But I think there's just too there was just too much crud and muck in there, and that's that's kind of glued it all together. I think once I get to about the crest of the threads that I that have been turned there, the whole thing will just you know disintegrate, and I'll be able to unpeel what remaining aluminium uh, sits in the threads. And then to tackle the more tricky problem of getting this piece out. Um, so this tubular style section here is um, is glued in really with Loctite. I don't really want to have to remake this because this was very carefully made with these threads pretty precisely sized. In fact I made those, I cut those threads before I laid my hands on this little microscope objective lens so I was pretty pleased with myself when it all went together you know without the parts having been fitted to each other at the time of manufacture so anyway I digress I'll probably have to turn the damn thing away and make another one which is more than slightly irritating I I think I may start by turning the whole block around and poking my boring bar further down and just gently take cuts off the tail end of that which is that shiny section there so that's that that is the same piece of metal as that uh, and it's 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 locked tight in so if I take you know an eighth of an inch at a time just step it back step it back and just see if I break enough of the uh, sheer strength of, of the cement to crack this forward section out because you know it doesn't need that much mechanical strength I suppose all that length does is give it axial uh, integrity so you slide it in and the further it slides in the more you know that this is absolutely uh, in line with the, with the center line of this block so over to the big lathe